also coming in because I don't want to hold you any longer. It's nine o'clock here and seven o'clock there. So let's go ahead and what the dictionary says about the sermon and then what God says as far as spiritual discernment and what we see in the Bible. So one definition of discern means to perceive or recognize. To perceive or recognize something. See, you want to be able to, when you say discern, you want to be able to perceive a thing. You want to be able to recognize a thing. Like you said, when you talk, when people are coming into your life, you want to be able to perceive. You want to be, well, you want to be able to recognize someone who's trying to hustle you. You want to be able to recognize somebody who doesn't mean you any good. See, those things you need to be able to recognize quick, to be able to perceive, mm -hmm. to be able to recognize when somebody has a doesn't have the right motive there it is doesn't have the right motive you know that's coming into your life don't have the right agenda don't have the uh that's not destined or connected to your purpose and you need to be able to perceive today you need to be able to discern today is this somebody that's connected to purpose in my life is this one connected to my destiny is someone connected to my calling or is this be foolishness amen is this just foolishness so discernment says, a uh, uh, biblical definition, it says here, let's go back here. Da, 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 da. Discernment is a spiritual gift given by God through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. It's a spiritual gift. And we see that over there in 1 Corinthians 12.9. That is a spiritual gift. This is something that the Holy Spirit bestows upon us. It's a spiritual gift. So as spiritual beings, we need to be asking God every day for discernment. God, I'm asking for the gift of discernment. God, I ask for grace in the area of discernment so that I would be able to discern that I have a discerning spirit and that I have the, you know, the move in discernment in my daily life. Amen. It says discernment is a spiritual gift given by God through the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. Believers receive discernment by reading and meditating on God's word. And as you heard about uh, Pastor Robin, she said she just left the Bible study and she came to another Bible study, which is the Bible study that we're in, because why? She wants more of God. Mm -hmm. She says she has to have it. And that's what we should always be seeking. We should always be seeking to hear the voice of God, to spend time with God and to be in his presence. Because the more time we spend time with God, seeking his word, amen, we begin to do these things. You begin to hear God and see God in, in the scriptures. See, this thing become, it becomes real to you. When you begin to read this thing and begin to spend time with him come to these bible studies and become before god but god begins to speak to you and you no longer have to wonder god is that you that is that you because as you begin to spend time it's just like you spend time with your, your, your husband and your wife or your children or people on the job you begin to recognize that voice some people voice you can recognize your eyes are closed see that's how we have to be with God we spend so much time with him that we know his voice amen that's God God I hear you and you know it God's been subtle it ain't just like subtle it's so subtle that it almost sounds like, like it's you speaking when you're praying in the spirit. It almost sounds like that, you know, it's, it's that subtle. Amen. So he's saying here for, 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 for in the app, for discernment, it's a spiritual gift. Also, we can look at Hebrew 4.12. Now, this is talking about the word of God. Uh, Hebrew 4 12 be like this. I'm going to read the whole thing because it's such a powerful uh, scripture. Uh, this is one I run to. This is this is part of my uh, Christian vo vo vocabulary. It says, for the word of God is living and active and full of power. See, that's why you have to speak the word of God over your situation and over your circumstance, because the word says right here in Hebrew 4 12 that the word of God is living. That means it's organic. It's in real time. It says it's active and what is full of power. 
That's enough to want to loaf. That's the one. That's enough to want to spend time in the Word of God. That's enough to be able to want to go search the Scripture to be able to apply that and pray that to your situation. Why? It says the Word of God is full of power. I don't know about you, but when I'm when I'm when my back is up against the wall, or when I'm needing direction from God and I'm needing instructions, I want something that's full of power, and it's right here at our fingertips. The Bible it says it's active. It's living, it's full of power, uh, it's making it operative, it's energized, and it's effective. It says it's sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the vision of the soul and spirit of both joints and marrow. But this is what I want you to see. It says here as far as discerning, discernment, but it's exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. That's what it says in Hebrew 4, 12. When he's talking about the discerning, uh, the, the discernment, the discerning of spirit, spirit and intentions of the heart, this is what discernment does. It exposes, it judges the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. So that's what I'm saying. When people are coming into your life, you want God to be able to expose it, to judge it. So you be able to perceive by the power of the Holy Spirit when you're inviting people in your life, but mostly to be able to see what? To see the good and evil. Amen. Is there amen. Any amen. Amen. Yes, Pastor. Go ahead. You said exposing. So mm -hmm. how, how do we decipher the, the difference between I know because God isn't going to give us nothing that's bad. I know I know that. Part. Right, right. See, but that's what the sermon, when you're praying for the sermon, that's what we said earlier. We said here is to perceive right. and to recognize. Right. So perceive or to recognize, it has to be exposed. So that's what I'm saying when we like when people come into our life, we should be asking from this day forth, is this purpose? Is this calling? Is this good and evil? What is the reason? What is the purpose? What is the connection? Gotcha. So, I, you know, God, I'm asking for discernment. Yes. I'm asking for discernment to be able to perceive and to recognize it and that God, you expose it. Mm -hmm. So that you, it be exposed. I'm going to show and you. And he does. Yeah, yeah, yes. And he does. And he does. And he does. And that's what's very important as we as Christians. This we this ought to be a day thing, God. I'm thanking, praise you for the sermon. Not just, you know, like we said, for people in jobs, but it's a part of our life to be able to perceive and recognize not just persons, but things, whatever's coming in our lives, whatever's coming our way. We need to ask God for the sermon. Yes. So we can stop wasting times on things that should, you know, inviting people, inviting things into our life with, with, with they, what he said, to perceive good and evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says another definition of discernment. It says to, to be able, someone said to be able to differentiate between people of the world, the voice of God, and to recognize when something feels right or wrong. Mm hmm that thing we said, you know, was something about that. I, yeah, it was something about that. See, that's God giving you discernment. When you know, when you when you you're able to perceive, because God gives some of some some of you have the gift of the this called the, the discernment of spirit, the discerning spirit, discerning of spirits. And I'm going to give you that definition right here. So when we talk about as as a spirit, we talk about the gift. God gives us gifts. The Holy Spirit gives us gifts, and one of the gifts that some of you may even have on this call, discerning of spirits. And yes. what that is, uh-huh, discerning of spirits. So what that is, let's pull it up here. It's a supernatural power to detect the realm of the spirit and its activities. That's one thing as far as a spiritual. To be able to what? detect the realm of what's going on in the spiritual realm and their activities. And here's another. It also implies the power of spiritual insight, supernatural revelation, 
and plans and purposes of the evil and of his forces. See, some people have that gift, the gift of discerning of spirits is the ability to discern the spirit world and especially to detect the true source of circumstances or its motives of people. Discerning of spirits. Yes. See, some of us can detect, you just sit back and watch. Mm -hmm. to, to, to see what the motive is, the motive of the person, a motive of a thing. Mm -hmm. And to be able to, to detect in the spiritual realm what is happening. Again, to perceive and recognize is a gift. And even in people. Uh -huh, that mo mostly that that's what we were talking about earlier that for we need to be asking when people come into our lives is this purpose is this destiny what is this what is the reason for coming into you know for coming if they're not adding multiply you, should, you don't want nobody to definitely divide it and bring a division but you need to be asking what is the reason for this person is it purpose is a destiny is a calling is a ministry and ask god that for this to be able to discern when people come into our lives and we're things, especially when some people come into your life, you're like, whoa, what was that? I don't know if you've ever experienced that. I'm sure as people of God, we've all have experienced that where we have invited someone into our life without asking, is this ministry? Is this, is this purpose? Is this connected to destiny? Is this calling? Whatever it is. Because a lot of people are ministry and we're putting them in a whole different category. Yes. See, a lot of people are really ministry. A lot of people we affiliate, associate with, they are ministry. And you have to be able to decipher ministry that this is a, this is this this person's in my life, but this is ministry. So and sometimes sometimes they're in their life because they need help from you. Mm -hmm. Ministry. Ministry. That, exactly. Ministry. Mm -hmm. oh, when, I, when, I, when I see people, when I meet new people, <clears throat> within the first few minutes, I already know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I As already know. Says, uh -huh, you, uh -huh. Discernment. Deeper, mm -hmm. deeper. And um, it is real. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, um, before I would want to say something, but I've learned to be quiet. I've learned that sometimes that gift is given for you to pray against what you're seeing yes. or pray for what that mm -hmm. person needs. Yes. So before I'd want to be like, blah, blah, blah. And now I just stay quiet mm -hmm. and I just pray on the sideline. Yeah. So now, like you said, you here it is. You're using wisdom to be quiet mm -hmm. and just watch. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Just watch. Because sometimes we, we we meet people, we're so excited to meet people and we just vomit. Just, we just spilling everything. Be just give it everything up. Just be just vomit everything. Give it a whole life, you know. Just spill it everything. Just vomit it. Just spin it. Just give it everything, and you don't really know. I'm telling you, betrayal is a real thing, people. Deception it is, it is, is a thing. Yes, Which it is. is. Ooh, you, you never lied. I just experienced that. Oh, me too, Pastor. And me it was too. a hurting feeling it because is. I because I. I had confidence in this person. I had faith in this person. We studied the word together. Oh man, yes. And same. that's you what were... really, that's really what cut deep with me. Yeah. That's why. I, Remember, I Miss Robin, even the devil was an angel. Yes. And it's harder, like she, Pastor Robin said, because the same thing, it was, it was Christians. So now I'm just watching you just perceive and recognize now. You know, I don't care if you've been, you just, you just have to, uh, you have to have, have, you have prudence. You know, we have to, like she said, like, like Lisa said, she, you know, she used to just vomit. Now you should step back and watch and listen because people are talk. Are we listening? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we listening? They, they, they tell you exactly who they are. They're they telling you the first yeah. conversation. I'm telling you. They're telling, and we just saw, oh, oh, it's a Christian. No, it, the devil got an agenda. Yes. And the, and, the, and, and, the, and the devil was a fallen angel as well. Yeah, exactly. Yes, that's why I said what it said. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But you know so, what I noticed? It's easier for you to discern for others 
the neighbor, the person in the store, church, wherever. But it's so hard to discern for yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like if I get betrayed or something being done <clears throat> and I've been to my best friend, <clears throat> well, how come you didn't see it? Because you can't see it for yourself sometimes. Mm, right, right, right. Miss Terrellin, Miss Terrellin, Miss Terrellin, yeah, Miss Terrellin. Good evening. You know, I was thinking about Pastor Petrina. Is um, you know, remember when Jesus touched the blind man, and he first time he touched him, he said, "How do you see men?" And he said, "They look like tall trees. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they were tall, they were high, they were lifted up, and yes. and they just seemed, you know, just insurmountable." And then he touched him again and he said, how do you see men? And he said, I see men as men. And I think that's what discernment does. Mm -hmm. It really it opens does. The it, eyes. it opens the eyes so we can really see people as people. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times it's after really, we don't really get that touch until we have really been through something where we did, we dig in deep, like Pastor Robin was saying, yes. she's, she's digging deep. She wants more. And like, I love what Lisa said when she says she learned to listen. I'm in that place where God is saying, I need you to listen more than you talk, Geraldine. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Geraldine, that listen illustration. And pay attention. Yes, listen like you said and pay attention. Pastor Geraldine, that, that illustration hit home. Thank you. That that gave me that gave me that extra oomph that I needed. Thank you. Yes. Mm, oh, that yeah. was beautiful. Thank you. Uh, yeah. You know, I just wanted to uh, jump in real quick. You know, we have two eyesights. Mm -hmm. We have natural sight, but you have spiritual sight. Yes. And so uh, the Bible says that um, uh, we are trees as righteousness. Yes. And we are trees of oaks. Mm -hmm. and, and so, but when Jesus touched him, uh, the uh, he opened his spiritual eyes. He touched him again, opened his natural eyes. Yes. And so um, when you sometimes you don't pick up on people a lot of times because, um, you know, the enemy's good at hiding. Yes. Uh, he Jesus is. said he comes in sheep clothing, but yes. inside he's a raven wolf. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when, when you're good at what you uh, at deception and mm -hmm. at deceiving people, uh, you may not. <laughs> Uh, you know, maybe you don't pick it up right away, but once they've gone and you settle down a little bit, yes. Hmm. I don't know what that is, but something is a. It's a, it's already in your spirit, but you just don't know what it is. In other words, you don't put your finger right on it. But yes. but you know, uh, the the Holy Spirit can never be fooled. Yes. And uh, uh, so you know, yes, yes, that that we have spiritual eyesight, but at the same time. Yes, we, we do have to, um, uh, but you know what? This comes as you grow. Yes, it does. Yes, you don't it just does. Feel all of a sudden. <laughs> yes, you are absolutely, you, you hit on a couple of things. Like she said, it, this comes with experience. This comes from I already have experience, betrayal, deception, or whatever. Now she says something that was so good. When you're good at what you do, at deceiving, and I'm going to add manipulation. See, she said, when you're good at what you do, and some, and some of these people are good at what they do, so you may not see it immediately. But like she said, when you calm down, you're like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, you got what she says. When you calm down, because that's the truth. When this excitement wears off and you have a chance, like see, you're looking through your natural eyes without without consulting God to look through your spiritual eyes. So that that's 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 really powerful. They're good. Uh, uh, uh what says sheep and uh, what she said. They're good at deceiving. They're good at the deception. They're good at what they do. Satan was good at what he that's did. Right. That's right. He's good at what he does now. So that's why we have to be asking God, God, thank you for discernment. I thank you for the sermon to be able to perceive, to be able to recognize, be able to recognize good and evil and to be able to see as far as people and things, to be able to see that thing. See, you got to be able, like somebody, I think Lisa said, you got to be able to see that thing before it's coming. 
See, you got to be able to see people because some of us, you do, you be like, oh, uh -huh, you, you saw that. And some people don't even get the time of day because you see what you see what they're bringing. Mm -hmm. And that is not connected to your purpose. It ain't connected to your calling. It ain't connected to your destiny. But you know what? Sometimes listen to people's stories, listening to people's betrayals. I realize that sometimes people are befriending new people or even old friends for the wrong intentions. And so when the wrong older. intentions, mm -hmm. when the wrong, when you yourself, the godly person's intentions are wrong, it backfires on you because that spirit that the other person's dealing with is already two steps ahead of your game and knows it too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you yeah. feel real dumb. Okay. So, Here's another th good thing with discernment. Uh, discernment is a decision-making process that involves listening for God's direction and guidance for our lives. Amen. Mm. Decision-making. Is a, is a decision-making process that involves listening for God's direction and guidance for our lives. Yes, fair. Meaning you got, when we're in tune with God, discernment is a decision-making process that involves, like Pastor was talking the last couple of weeks, he was talking about hearing the voice of God. So discernment involves listening to be able to discern, is that God, is that you? Or is that the enemy trying to creep in? You know, to be able to distinguish, to differentiate between God's voice and the voice, he said, God said, my sheep know my voice. See, we, because when we, like Pastor Robin was saying, but we began to spend more time with him. And that we, when we begin to, you know, get in this word, God will begin to speak to you. And, you know, have you ever had a dream? And that thing was so real, like you're in that dream and you can, you wake up, you could say that, tell everything about that dream, what happened. God is speaking, but it's so clear. And then when you can see God is dropping names and things and you see, you know, and you can see that thing comes to fruition. Discernment. Yes. The, even when you spend the time, you know, you could be praying all day. You said, well, I didn't hear nothing yet. Just wait on it. Because God could be speak to you through this word. You can find exactly what you look at and pray it all day. You can find, open that scripture. God said, there it is right there. Or when you're in your dreams, God is revealing things in the dream, in his word, or through a person. Can I ask, can I ask you something? Yes. For the last two, three years, I like to pray on my Bible open it and wherever it lands, I always ask the Lord to give me a word for the day. Wherever I land, then I'll meditate on what he's trying to say. Some things is right on the money. Sometimes I'm like, what? I know it's off the subject, but mm -hmm. I can't get the answer I'm, that is settling in my spirit. So I just thought I'd ask you. He keeps sending me to Psalms 3 for the last three years. Every time I ask him for a word and I can't figure out why it's the same well, you message. Just and you know how you're saying, listen for his word, listen for his voice. The more you meditate, mm -hmm. on, meditate on him. Yes. And I can't figure out what does it mean? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking over like, you know. Okay. See, just the topic of that law, if you would just the, the, just the, the, the topic of Psalm 3, enough says enough. The Lord helps his troubled people. That's the topic of Psalms 3. So when you're saying he keeps sending you over there, that topic says the Lord helps us trouble people. So that says alone, God is sending you word for help. Lord, how, Lord, how have they increased who troubled me? Many are they who rise up against me. See, his hymn saying right here, he's sending you help. Arise, O Lord, save me, O God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessings is upon your people. See, you when you go through that, you begin to see God with God because God, anything in this Bible, God is talking to us. 
He tells you here, but you, O oh Lord, you are a shield for me. See, that's me, God, to me, from just from just from what I'm read and in my spirit, that's God letting you know he's your helper right here. See, that's God letting he know right here. I'm your shield right here. He says, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from the holy hill. See, the, just for me reading this that little bit, if I went to that scripture, God sent me to that, that the scripture. That's God confirming that he's my help. See, he's my shield right here. See, this is something God, This, this I would take this personal that yes. God is speaking to me. So yes. when you're saying that he sent you to that scripture, yes, that's what God's saying. I'm here to help you. Mm. I'm your shield. That's what he's saying right here. But you see, okay, I, I've tried to like even like go deeper and where it came from with David and all that. But we'll get the part that tugs at me the most is when he says, I will break the teeth of the ungodly. And so it got to the point where I was like, well, dang, Lord, who's betraying me? Who's talking about him? Who's doing me wrong? That you're protecting me in the spirit so nothing's happening. But I don't know. It just, you know what I stopped doing? I stopped asking for a word. And yesterday I said, okay, okay, Lord, it's been a few months. I haven't asked for a word. More than a few months. Give me a word that can uplift me for the day. Back to Psalms 3. I'm, I just threw my hands in the air, walked away. Exactly. He said because it's the same. I, I promise you on everything. It's been the same scripture for three years. And this, he's telling you the same thing until you understand it and receive it. I'm here to help you. I'm your shield. That, that, this scripture, that to me, that's personal. That's, that's God, me. the God Almighty telling you. You asking for you asking him for something, and he's telling you who I am, the Lord who helps us trouble people. Pastor Norwood, you, you said you wanted to dig deeper when he said here uh, about somebody coming up against you. Who has set themselves against me all around? As long as you're a Christian, guess what? You're gonna always have somebody coming up against you. That's why we talk about the sermon, so yes. you be able to perceive and recognize that thing in yes. the spirit. Yes. Pastor Norwood, yes, yes. I'm sorry. It's it uh, on the uh, in the uh, um amplified vision. It's I mean um amplify. It says the morning prayer of trust in God. That's what the title says of it. See, and the amplify the morning prayer of trust in God. Yes. So you have your answer. God said, "I'm here to help you," and He's telling you uh, in the amplify to trust Him discernment we're back to sermon again we're back to yes, what sir. you said that when god began to speak to you and things and people are coming into life he said this what this watch this this watch and listen he give you wisdom this watch and listen because at, at first you said you just did blah 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 you just vomit up all of this give all your business up and give all your information up give all your information of the people who was not even worthy of it all right so when he gave that, see, that reminds me of um, Samuel. When he called him all those times, he said, here I am. So God, you're asking God for something and he's going to keep giving it to you until you receive it. So I would, go through, I would go through Psalms 3 again and then look at it from a different perspective. Okay, God, here I am. You're helping me. You want me to trust you and allow God to be able to reveal everything else and those eight scriptures, because that's a very short chapter. So it's so, but he says so much in there. He says that I'm your shield. I'm your shield and buckler. I'm your shield. Protect you. I, I believe so it. He says so much. See, when someone God tell me that, see, I would I don't have a problem. He's saying, who has set themselves against me all around? I'm not asking no questions. I'm gonna put Psalms 35 on. See, I don't look. You just sit, like you said, you get give your own message, what you said earlier. Just sit and watch and listen. That's part of discernment, being obedient to what God has to say to us. It's like, like uh, Miss J said earlier, it's a process. It really, it really is a process. As you begin to grow in this life, it's just a process. It really is. 
to be able, like the woman at the well. He said, uh, you got five husbands. He, she said, I perceive you are a prophet. I perceive me that I can see, I can, I can recognize this. She only knew that in the spirit. She had to get that in the spirit. I perceive you are a prophet and you be, have to be able to perceive, to be able to recognize that thing, whether it be a thing, whether it be a person, whatever. You have to be able to recognize and perceive people's weaknesses, your own strength, your own weaknesses. You have to be able to have discernment in this Christian walk. Amen. Let's see here. Amen. That's I mean, so is, true. Mm -hmm. It says here, the foundation of Solomon's reign is going to be defining. It's a defining characteristic. See, he asked for wisdom. I like that right there. See, he asked, he, said, he asked for wisdom, but he also said, let me find this back over here. So he said here, therefore give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may be able to discern. See, the reason why God blessed him with everything because he didn't ask for things. He asked for, he needed help. He needed help with everything that all the people, the, all the, the new, for people, for people too numerous for him to count. He needed help because this was supposed to be David's responsibility, but out of his disobedience, he gave it over to Solomon. And Solomon said, look, I need some help. So he needed that. He needed that be able to make good, good and sound judgment. He needed to be able to decipher what was good and what was evil. And he asked, he said here, therefore give your servant an understanding heart to be able to judge your people that I may be able to discern good and evil, but who is able to judge this great people of yours? And what did God say? He said, the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had, had asked this thing. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked for a long life for yourself, nor have you asked for riches for yourself, nor have you asked for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern. To discern, to be able to perceive. What scripture was that? That's first King three nine through eleven. Thank you. Mm -hmm. To be, be able to discern. Okay. So it says the foundation of Solomon's reign is going to be its defining characteristic, wisdom or discernment. It's the ability to make righteous judgment in a complex situation is a gift from God. It is to Solomon's credit that he valued this gift over any type of personal, uh, any type of personal or anything uh, or any prosperity. He wanted discernment. He wanted wisdom to be able to perceive and recognize good and evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it says discernment is a spiritual gift given by God, as we said, through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And as we saw that over in 1 uh, Corinthians 12, here we got that one. So we saw that we already broke that down over in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 9, where he talks about the different gifts. Some have the word of wisdom, some have the word of knowledge, some have... Uh, Faith, the gift of healing, working miracles, prophecy, and discerning of spirits. And we all possess some of these gifts here. And the interpretation of tongues and the different kinds of tongues. But see, one of those gifts is discerning of spirits. Where you're able to, where you want God to be able to expose it and judge the very thought and intents of people's hearts. Amen. Okay. It says the Bible teaches us to seek discernment in order to grow in wisdom. Go ahead. Was somebody going to say something? No, wait a minute. Go ahead. The Bible is here to teach us 
to seek discernment in order for us to grow in wisdom and understanding and knowledge and in God's spiritual truth. So we ought to be asking God for discernment every day. God, give me discernment, you know, for my day. Give me discernment so I'll be able to perceive and recognize. Mm -hmm. To be able to recognize deception, to be able to recognize manipulation, to be able to recognize whatever, anything that's got hindrance, anything that's a blockage, anything that's a distraction. God, give me, dis give me discernment to be able to perceive it. Amen. Does anybody have any questions? This is straight fire and I love it. This is Holy Ghost good fire. And I'm chewing it up like I'm sucking it up like a sponge. <laughs> that's because you that's because you've been in Bible study all day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it really is important because in these last days, um, we, we need as as children of the most high God, we need to be able to, like she says, for the discerning of spirits means a supernatural power to be able to detect the realms of the spirit. And we as Christians, we need to be able to detect the realms of the spirit. We need to be able to detect to see what's going on. You know, God is downloading to us, that word of God. He's downloading that to us, his children. And we be, need to be able to decipher what's happening, what's coming. You know, what's going on in the world? We have to, we as spiritual beings, we have to be able to decipher, to discern what is going on in the spiritual realm. And who's God's going to reveal that to? He's going to reveal that to us. Mm -hmm. That's why, like Pastor Robin said, we have to stay in this word. We have to seek his face. Uh huh. Ask, seek, and knock. We got to continue to be pursuing him so that God can download that to us. Mm -hmm. And so God can give us super supernatural revelation and gives us give us the supernatural plans and the purpose of everything that's around us, that's coming into our lives and that's leaving our lives so that we can have an understanding, have a clear perception, have clarity on God's purpose for our life, God's calling for our life and for our ministry. Whatever you believe in, trust in God, we need, we need discernment. We need clarity. We need understanding. And that's the very thing that Solomon asked for, wisdom, discernment, to be able to discern, to do what? To take care of God's people, to be able to take care of God's people. And most of you here on this phone are in ministry one way or the other. You need discernment. You in ministry? You, you, whatever you're doing, you work and you're a leader in, 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 the, in the house of God, you need discernment because there's too many different personalities coming. It's coming. Like he said, the devil, he was, he was a worshiper, an angel, full of deception, full of deceit. Mm hmm so we have to be as kingdom people, as leaders in the church, whatever you're doing, you need discernment in this hour more than ever before, more than ever to be able to see. Because like you said, what the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The enemy is coming as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He just roam in the sea. Who, 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 who next? And you have to be able to dis perceive, to discern what's this that's coming into your life. Is this from God? Whether it be a thing, whether it be a person, whatever it is, is this from God? Amen. Are there any more questions? Or does anybody have anything else they want to add? I want to say something. Uh, I, was, I was listening to something. This, 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 I thought this was really interesting. It said a witch, an evil person, and a selfish person could do the same damage to you. Did anybody understand? Say, say, say that again. A witch, an evil person, Ooh. and a selfish person can do the same damage to you. Wow. My God. My God. And I said, I said, I looked up. I said, wait a minute. Let me look at that again. So I looked up a self, what is the word, what it says, a selfish person. And I'm going to pull it up here. This is the definition. 
When I saw that, I thought, oh my God. It said all three of these, a witch, an evil person, a selfish person can do the same damage to you. Have that much of an impact and disruption in your life. Selfish person. So when I thought, okay, so you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be watchful of that. Oh. Uh-huh. You called it out. Uh -huh. oh, God. Yeah. Has Jeez. no has no regard for others. Excessively, here it is right here. The signs. What scripture? Oh no, this ain't no scripture. This is just a definition of a selfish person. Oh. You can see many things in the Bible, uh, you know, selfishness. But that that when I saw that, I thought, uh, you don't care for the needs of other people. And when it said these three people have the same, can do the same damage, all three. Now you wouldn't equate, I would you wouldn't normally you wouldn't equate a selfish person to a witch and evil, but when you think about it, that's a self-centered, it's a it's a me person. It's all about them. So if you think about the damage, then you can when you look at it that way, the damage, the trauma, listen to it like that, the trauma that all these three people can do to your life. Just think of the, 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 the trauma. So that's why we need discernment, to be able to discern between good and evil. Because we've all have sat amongst Christian people and you, you, you understand, you've all sat, you've all have, you know, like may have, may have experienced deception and manipulation. I thought that's a, no, no, that was a good uh, an example of all three not having a regard for people, you know, just not having a guard, not having empathy. It says a person, a selfish person doesn't have empathy. Discernment. That's what we need to be praying to God for discernment, for God to open like, like uh, Miss J said earlier, to be able to see in the spiritual realm, to be able to hear with spiritual ears. That's what Solomon was asking for. I'm gonna need wisdom. He, went out, he was like, I'm gonna need wisdom. God, I'm gonna need discernment to deal with all these people. He said, so numerous, too many to count. Yeah, you're gonna need help. When it's too, it's too many to count. You're gonna need good judgment. You're gonna need prudence. Good judgment with an understanding heart. Mm -hmm. Like Lisa said, like the Bible tells us to be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger. That's wisdom, that's discernment. To be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger. Well, before we conclude, does anybody else have anything else? Yes, and I just thank you for this Bible study topic because <clears throat> I thought that I had a pretty decent spirit of discernment, mm -hmm. but I do know that I give up too much of my life and share too much with people because that's just my personality. I'm open. Mm -hmm. But one of my girlfriends has cautioned me. She's like, girl, you don't need to tell everybody all that. Why you need mm -hmm. to tell all that? Mm -hmm. And moving forward now onto this next chapter, I truly need a spirit of discernment because I'm going to be coming across new people. And even before I get to where I'm going, I need a spirit of discernment to make sure yes. that I'm hearing the word of God guiding me. And it's the word of God. Yes. Not Ursula's thoughts, not Ursula's wants and nobody else's but God's. Yes. Yeah. Amen. 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 So I do thank you. And I just want to say on a personal note, happy birthday, Pastor Mel. But I know you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's recording. Yes, it's his birthday today. Uh, Talon, did you have a question? Is your hand up? Was that from the last time? No, no. What I was going to say, um, one of the things too, and I praise God for tonight's message on discernment. 
And also, you know, one thing about discernment, I believe that, who was that? I think it was Lisa. It's, it's oftentimes just observing. It's sitting and observing and watching and being still and mm -hmm. just really watching. I mean, some things are going to pop up right away and you've got to have, you know, be instant in season and out. Yes. And, and be ready to give every man a reason for your hope. And certain things you're going to say, oh, my God, oh, this person walked up on me and and or you met someone, um, whether it's at a grocery store or what have you. And 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 you'll discern in your spirit if their spirit is the spirit of God when you when you've been with God. Yes. But if not, if you haven't been with the Lord, haven't spent time in his word and at his feet, or you're tired or you're anxious sometimes, you may not be able to discern that. But then that's when you go into that mode of saying, you know, I'm just going to listen to what they're saying and then ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, speak to me, make this plain, you know, and that's, that's one thing I'm learning. But more than anything else, as I've matured and gotten older, even yesterday, I said, oh, no, you said too much. Holy Spirit will, 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 it's like a slinky. Oh, yeah. You know, for those of us who remember the slinkies back in the yeah. day when kids used to play outside, you can only go so far and the Holy Spirit will snap you back and say, you know what, you're talking too much. Or, talking you, 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 you're, <laughs> you're doing talking too, too much. much. You're doing yeah. too much. You, you know, you know, it's like an answer. You just, you just, oh, man, why did I, you, you know, you did, it's like you right, you right in the middle and he was saying, zip it up, right? Zip it up. And that's what I love about, about the Lord, his grace and his mercy sufficient. He doesn't condemn us, but he constantly uh -huh. reminds us, you know, I need you to just listen. I need you to listen. And I say, oh God, thank you. And that's, we can talk to God just like we talk to each other. We don't have to go to tell everybody everything because all they can really do for us is pray unless they're, you know, if they're seasoned in the word and you really need to talk to someone and say, I, I want to make sure I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not running ahead of God or falling, falling behind because I'm not demonstrating faith and ask that person to agree with you in prayer for God's will. But we can't keep running to people. God has shown me that. He said, you better come to me. You better yeah. love to me. And if you're a new Christian, of course, you seek godly wisdom. And as you begin to mature, certain things are going to come up that are harder than normal things that you might encounter. You can go yeah. to a seasoned sister. Make, and if you're a woman, go to a woman of God. Women, we have to be careful about going to men, you know, and then men need to be careful about going to women, you know, and that's just for, for personal things. Go to a couple. If you if you if you if if you're a woman, go to go to the couple, you know, just be careful because Satan can even use that. You you know, you play on their sympathy. And before you know it, you find yourself somewhere you don't need to be. So discern even how you need to communicate things when you're going through. Yes. You know? So that's just a, a, a something I've wanted to share. And I'm I'm really learning. I've had some quiet time with the Lord. And he said, you're going to learn to talk to me more than you run to people. Mm. Mm. Yes, Lord. That's good right there. Yes. And you're absolutely right. You're going to learn to run to me uh, instead of running to people. Yes. <laughs> Yes. That's and that that like somebody like she was saying earlier that comes with experience. That I mean, they, this is not an overnight thing. It takes time, you know. Um, learning the voice of God, and you're gonna always be is that you know, Lord, you know. And as we begin to spend more time with Him, and as He begin to speak to you, you're and it's such it's so subtle. But absolutely, you know, you you know, just um, it's always always want to spend more time with them. Always want to be before, like she said, my thing now is just being quiet. Just sit down, just be still sometimes. Just enjoy, just sit, just him, and, and just be quiet. Just just be still. I had a um, request. If um, you all can pray for me, because I'm starting a new job. And I'm going to be dealing with the homeless mm -hmm. part of my job. So I'm going to need a little extra discernment and I'm going to need a little extra strength mm -hmm. so that I don't get myself in trouble when someone says something that, that I don't like. So if you all can pray for me for that, I'd appreciate it. Well, absolutely. We're going to go to the scripture where we just said, the Bible said, well, let's yes, pray. Indeed. Thanks. Let's pray, uh, Brother Jonathan. 
Let's pray in the spirit for him. I'm just going to lead him. We're going to lift you up uh, brother, and be in agreement with you, Brother Jonathan. Father God, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you in advance for the job you have blessed Brother Jonathan with, Lord God. We thank you for your mercy and your grace, Father God. As he starts this new job, Father God, the word of God says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger, Father God. We bind and come against any temptation, any distractions, and any hindrance that will block him from doing his job, God, with excellence. The Bible talks about excellence. Daniel had an excellent spirit. So I pray for excellent spirit to come upon Brother Jonathan in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God. I thank you for favor with this new boss, Father God. I thank you with favor with this new employer, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God. We bind and come against any satanic attacks, Father God, any imps, any plots, any plans, any schemes of the enemy that would try to distract him, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that he will walk in the fruits of the Spirit. May the Spirit of love come upon him, the Spirit of joy, peace, God, Thanks. Ooh, yes, God. I thank you for fruitfulness in his life, Lord God. I thank and praise you, Father God, that this job will be a testimony, God, of what you have done, what you're doing in his life, God. May he testify of the goodness and the of the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ and what you've done for him, God. And may he be an example, God, of your grace. May he be an example of your wisdom. May discernment come upon him. May he give him the spirit of discernment that he will be able to perceive and recognize the trappings of the enemy God that may come up against them in the name of Jesus Christ. But we decree and declare fruitfulness. We decree Declare more open doors from you in the name of Jesus Christ. That every door that the enemy has shut, God is opening more doors for you. So I pray that you will walk in peace, that the God Jehovah Shalom will be upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you that Jehovah Gabor will walk with you on that job, that the angels of the Lord that have been assigned to you that will walk with you and be on that job in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the Spirit of God will nudge on you, Rombo Shera Namanda. Harito kumash frienta. Mm, that when something begins to rise up against you, may the spirit of God, that's your helper and your comforter and your teacher and your advocate, will advocate for you, will advocate for you in the name of Jesus Christ. We stand in agreement. The Bible says when two agree on touching and asking anything on earth, it shall be done of our Father which is in heaven. We stand in agreement for your success. We stand in agreement for your peace. We stand in agreement for your joy. We stand in agreement for your increase, your promotion, and the favor of God that's upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So I pray that your mind will be renewed in the things of God. So when that old man try to rise up against you, that the new man will rise up in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. 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 Well, does anybody else have any questions? I don't want to keep you with three minutes over. Does anybody have anything else? Are you on in the morning? I'm not, I'm going to start getting back on. I know you, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get a time, Pastor Rob. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, everybody, I thank you so much. Um, I'm, um, uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just got full and excited because now I'm going to delve more into discernment. You know, this, when we guys, we start sharing with each other life stories, life history, you know, because we're all in this walk together. Amen. So this is mm -hmm. like, like Pastor Robin said, this is make me like, oh gosh, I got to get in this world even more. I, you know, I just get excited about it. Pray even, even the more. So I'm excited excited about what God is doing in your life and in this ministry. Uh, shalom, walk in peace, walk in favor, walk in blessings, walk in everything that God has called and purpose for your life. I stand Amen. and agree with you in Jesus name. Be blessed y'all. Amen. 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 Good night. Amen. Love you. Love you all. Love you too. Love you. Shalom. 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 <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay, Judy, how you want me to cut it off?